Good morning. Michael, how you doing? I'm doing well. Nice socks. Uh, yeah, full disclosure, I'm wearing Ripple socks. I don't know, yeah. you know, so. Um, we also own a lot of XRP. Uh, I guess that's another disclosure, so. As you can see by the name of my fund, so. All good. Uh, so I'm not an unbiased observer, so. Uh, are you wearing, you're not wearing Ripple socks? I don't have any, no, to get me some. I, I know a person, yeah. Uh, so you're, you're the founder of Ripple. Um, would you say that you're a Bitcoin maximalist? <laughs> well, uh, look, we love, everybody loves Bitcoin because, uh, you know, it started this whole thing. You know, there'd been, uh, you know, there'd been many attempts to have sort of a global currency that was not a government currency in the past. Linden Dollars was a great example. Yeah. Uh, Phil Rossdale, amazing entrepreneur. Um, Vermont Dollars, you had Beans Floors. You had a lot of attempts yeah. over a, a long period of time. But Bitcoin kind of changed everything because it was the first, you know, to sort of uh, solve the double spend problem. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we all owe a great deal of, uh, of uh, debt uh, to Bitcoin. However, I think it's important to have different uh, technologies that try to solve different problems uh, and maybe do you, it in a different way. You took that question as a, that I, was a joke and just segued perfectly into, <laughs> yeah. So but, please, yeah, tell us about why XRP is important. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, for one, when we looked at Bitcoin, we thought, could we do something maybe that uh, improved upon it? And one of the big things was the energy consumption. You know, I mean, we're, we're here uh, in an area that is suffering from some pretty horrendous, you know, consequences of, of climate change. And, you know, the industry as a whole right now is uh, it's belching out enormous amounts of CO2. That's not a good thing. And I have a hard time seeing how the young generation is going to put up with that, right? We, I think this next generation is going to be, I think it's going to be militant about climate change. I think yeah. that's good. And so I think the industry as a whole has got to find different ways of doing that, whether that's green energy, different ways of doing uh, confirmation of transactions. That's what we try to do with uh, the XRP ledger. It doesn't use meaningful amounts yeah. of electricity. But the other big thing is I think we, after looking at it, we quickly realized that the world is not going to be dominated by a single blockchain. It's just impossible that everybody is going to organize inside a distributed ledger and they're going to be trading just that one digital asset. I think we all kind of accepted that. Early days, you know, it was, well, this is incredibly exciting. It could replace everything. But I think we all kind of understand now this is going to be a, a, a great diversity of different ledgers of different currencies, whether they be fiat, digital, digital yeah. assets, gaming assets. Um, there's going to be all kinds of different things. So we need something in, in addition to a very efficient distributed ledger, and we think XRP ledger is, is the most efficient out there. Um, but also you need derivatives of, of this blockchain technology and specifically inter interoperability protocols. So we believe in something very strongly called uh, ILP, interledger protocol. And so uh, very differently from digital assets, that's a way of wiring together all of the world's ledgers, all of the world's currencies so that just like the internet, um, value can now move like data does. So we call that an internet of value. And internet of value needs both of those things. It needs yeah. interoperability uh, protocol, which is not a ledger, doesn't hold state, doesn't have a currency, super low level, something that every country, every company can get behind, yeah. um, which means it has to be very feature light. And then something that is very efficient uh, in terms of how the digital asset works. And we think the biggest use case initially is going to be for rewiring our financial uh, plumbing, how payments move around the world. Yeah. We think that's the most broken uh, kind of aspect of globalization today. You know, data moves freely, goods move freely. You know, we've talked about this before. It costs four cents to send a, sh uh, a shirt clear across the country because of the shipping container. Yeah. We love shipping containers. Um, but with money, um, that's broken. Uh, it takes days to move money cross border. Yeah. It costs uh, a fortune for particularly the people in the developing world. Uh, and it's also closed because it's a bilateral system rather than being an internet system. So we need th that internet of value to, to be developed. And that's what we spend our time working on is a replacement for SWIFT and correspondent banking. How do you get all of the payment providers, all of the wallets uh, onto ILP? And then how do you use XRP as on-demand liquidity so that all of these providers don't have to keep balances all over the world because the process is so inefficient. And we think that's the winning kind of killer app. And then I think you last, the last group talked about a Cambrian explosion. Yeah. Then you get that Cambrian explosion. So not a Bitcoin maximalist thing. 
we, we appreciate Bitcoin. I feel like I could have asked you what your favorite color is, and still you have that down with the, the, the overview of the, of the Ripple ecosystem. I, um, in the audience, who owns or has owned XRP? Okay, that's great. Who despises XRP and thinks Chris is the devil? <laughs> no one. So things are getting, oh, we have one. So things are getting better. Right? Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I just wanted to see if anyone thought you were evil. Such a, I, so I want to. <laughs> we don't have a ton of time. I know you just did a much longer interview in Berkeley where you got into the more of your personal history. I want to make sure we talk about a couple of things that are very important to you personally. And one of the things you've talked to me about is your personal desire to, to end child pornography in the world and that you have um, a project that you're working on with other people. And I want to give you a chance to sort of talk about that and explore it a little bit and also how Ripple can play a part. Well, we give all credit to an organization called Thorn, which yeah. is an amazing organization, won the TED Audacious Award Thorn. this last year, yeah. Thorn. Uh, an incredible uh, group of folks. And what they're trying to use, they're trying to use technology to, as a solution for what is basically a technology yeah. problem that's getting, that's getting worse, and it's, it's the proliferation of uh, child sexual abuse material. I know it's a very difficult topic, but it's something I think we all have to address. And why that's relevant to crypto is that you're increasingly seeing, one, the material is skyrocketing right now. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, obviously that's terrible. Through encrypted apps, right? Yeah, it's, it's Tor, obviously, uh, uh, which is a very important technology for privacy. And uh, this is the problem, right? We have, we've got to get more privacy in the world. Yeah. And you know, we've got heroes in crypto working on that. Zuko, who, uh, who founded uh, Zcash, yeah. that was awesome. I mean, because they are working on privacy, which we need more of that to end this problem of surveillance and hacking. Absolutely, you need that. But at the same time, you see this kind of explosion of this, uh, this horrible material. Uh, and we just have to solve both of those things, right? Yeah. So Without uh, breaking encryption. W without breaking encryption. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, now the world is moving to more end-to-end -end, uh, yeah. encryption and communication. Everybody agrees that's going to create another explosion in, in yeah. sharing of material. So, but this position somehow that you either have privacy and all this abuse, or you end abuse and you have no privacy, that's like unacceptable. We have all these geniuses in the room here in this industry. Yeah. We've got to figure this out. I think there are ways of doing that. There are a lot of people working on that, yeah. but, I, but I think that can be accomplished. And it's important to crypto because right now the payment vehicle of choice for this material is crypto. It used to be credit cards. That was shut down. Then it was barter and now it's increasingly crypto. Yeah. There's some good news in that if we all kind of get together on, on solving it. Um, there's a great company called Chainalytics. Uh, you yeah. know, we all know, we've invested in it. Phenomenal people, and they are catching these people by, because they're looking at the use of crypto mm -hmm. in this material, and actually it's, it's tipping off authorities yeah. to, to what's going on. So again, I think crypto could be the good guys here. Yeah. Maintain privacy in the abuse. We, we can do both of those things. And if we don't, though, you know, sometimes the problem in tech world is, uh, and this is why there's a backlash, is like we're so focused on the goodness of our tech and kind of protecting freedom, <clears throat> it starts looking like indifference to the outside world. Yeah. And, and then you see the backlash happening with regulators and, and clamping down. It's kind of what's happening you know, with, with Facebook, for example. And uh, I think if we get ahead of it by working with Thorn and also working with EFF on protecting privacy. Yeah, what's on the, the other EFF's side. position on Thorn? You know, they're both great, and we love EFF. Uh, are, are they against it now, or are they working with They're Thor? increasingly, I think they are, are, they all, both sides know that these are both priorities. Yeah. So my hope, and we're trying to increasingly get those kinds of folks working together. Yeah. Because it's only when those, you know, good people on both sides are working, working together. Yeah. You know, and yeah. We, we can solve this. So I'm a libertarian. Uh, I know you're not. But uh, I, at first, when we talked about Thorn, I was worried. Uh, about how they were approaching the industry, but it, I've done some research on it, and they do it without breaking encryption. They do it with hashing images and, and sort of creating a blacklist. And um, it doesn't stop all child pornography, but it, it can definitely stop the viral spread. Right. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting. And yeah. so I urge people to, um, I know there's a, a strong libertarian uh, bent in crypto, but I, I urge people to look into Thorn and form opinions with an open mind. Yeah, yeah, and contribute to what they're doing as well, yeah. both with uh, resources and and knowledge, frankly. Yeah. So.
What's your opinion on, uh, on all the China stuff? So China was sort of this sleeping giant in crypto, and then suddenly this announcement's made. And I think like you know, within days, there were 8,000 new crypto events that, that happened in China. Uh, how does that affect your strategic thinking around, around Ripple and XRP and, and opportunities there? It's another phenomenal move. I mean, this, this is big news. Um, you know, uh, in some ways, the Facebook news, even though it created some headwinds, um, it's big news because it's, it's a big organization uh, saying that this is critically important technology. And I think now with, with China's move, putting that on the list of critical technologies right yeah. up there with uh, AI and, and quantum computing, that's huge. I think it probably is a watershed moment. Um, I think what it means, though, is obviously the U.S. regulators have got to step up. I think they're doing a pretty good job, but we haven't... We haven't wait, 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 wait. <laughs> got to give credit. Take, it's hard. Okay, so it's hard work. Let's take the statement of we think the U.S. regulators are doing a pretty good job. Let's wrap that up, and let's put that over here for one moment, right? Let's continue with China, but I want to just come back to that. This is being recorded, you know, so they are going to see all that, so... Because <laughs> they're bastards. I mean, they really... I think we have a difference of opinion on the U.S. Like, regulatory uh, uh, ability and willingness to do uh, a good job, but back to China, yeah. Well, at the same time, though, U.S. leads, you know, I have to say, they, they have led in the whole t uh, Internet revolution. The, the, the internet, whole internet revolution, which was awesome because they didn't mess it up. We, we could have gone either way, though. There was a yeah. critical moment in 97 yeah. when they laid out a framework, and, that, and that's kind of what you need here, and we haven't done that yet. So, but and the other difference, though, is finance is just way more complicated yeah. than when we're just dealing with data, right? It's right. way more complicated. Um, you know, words can do so much, uh, money can buy bullets, right? So it's, 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 the consequences are more severe. So I get that, I respect, it's a really hard thing, but we've got to step it up. And with uh, China's announcement now, I think we're really in danger of falling behind yeah. and sending more companies uh, abroad or yeah. sending, um, kind of cutting out the U.S. from even dealing with the U.S. And, you know, that would be absolutely tragic. So, but the good news is I think uh, the administration gets that. Yeah. And uh, I, we got to make our cases. You know, we open an office in D.C. I think we Wait, all sorry, have to have a place You think the administration there. gets that? I think so. I think this administration Trump is, is, is pro-innovation. Yeah. You think he understands it? Well, I think the, the, the let's put, let's put that one. Let's take that one and let's put that one over here as well. But back to China, what's the Ripple like opportunity? And I don't know, do you, have you done deals with banks in China? Is, there, is it over more through Hong Kong? Or is there some opportunity here for Ripple and for XRP to have a bigger footprint in China like it has in Korea, for example? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, it, it's a, a market that we're absolutely committed to. You have to be committed in the, in the long term. And I think you also have to uh, go in with a very neutral yeah. This cannot be something that is trying to be dictating how things are going to work, yeah. right? So it's got to be very neutral, and it's got to be shown as being positive. And, and in my view, this technology for China is very positive because it would make it easier for other countries to use uh, the RMB, for example. Yeah. And I actually think, um, and this is the same situation for the U.S. and for Europe, I think blockchain technology, once you have an Internet of Value, the big four get stronger. The big four currencies, right? The, yeah. the USD, the Euro, the Yen, and RMB. Because yeah. now they're easier to get throughout the world. And I think that's very positive for China. It's very positive for the US, very positive for Europe. And I think that's the case you have to go in making. But you can't come in there and, and try to say, hey, you know, we're here to disrupt you or something like yeah. that. Got to get rid of that stupid disruption word just for good. So. Come. Sorry. All right. All right, let me pick up one of these guys over here. So we have, let's bring this over where the SEC is doing a good job. Now, I understand that, that oh, you didn't say the SEC. You said U.S. regulators are doing, uh, did, what did you say? I, you, said they're, you said that they are. They're working hard. They're working hard. They're working try yeah. hard. There's a lot of cross currents here. There, there are a lot of bad guys. There's a lot of good stuff going on. What's the good it's stuff? Hard, it's hard to tell. Well, rewiring the financial system of the world. And getting an internet of value is a fundamentally good thing. Oh, that's thing. good stuff in crypto. That's What's good the good stuff, stuff for the world? The regulators? Like, if you took it... They understand that. I think they understand that our uh, SWIFT correspondent banking is antiquated, it's broken, we need a new system. God, you are just so on point. <laughs> you are just so on point. You got right back in. Well, but we, uh, everybody understands, yeah, no, I think. Look, it's it. a fair point. No, the, the ad networks that, that run the internet as we yeah. know it, that, I think everybody okay. wants to throw that out. And web monetization through blockchain technologies is, yeah. is, is a solution there. Uh, but you would agree that the SEC is the single greatest evil 
in, in stopping the U.S. from being competitive in crypto. You would say that, right? I'm going to take back your socks. Yeah. Let's put this back that. over there. I know you can't, you can't say things that I can say because, but I know how you really feel about that. But I do, yeah. the, the Trump He's, gets he, it. This is his own, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to go too deep into this. I did but, not say that, so. Actually, I'm going to put the Trump one back over there. We're not going to talk about that. I want, we Wait, but you have to admit, though, this is the best uh, fintech environment we've ever had. So you're a big Trump supporter. Well, what I support is not too much regulation, right? You, otherwise, you, it, sometimes you try to go after the big banks. And you end, the big banks are fine. They got a ton of money, a ton of lawyers, and you, you end up crushing all the entrepreneurs. And we saw that, we saw that after the financial crisis. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, for example, could have been an, an, an amazing kind of new type of bank. And frankly, I think it got crushed yeah. by things that came out of the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. That's a bummer. Okay. Okay, so um, maybe you're not going to want to touch this one too, but I, I often see uh, the leaders in, in, in our world, the crypto world, um, and not naming anyone in particular, but the leaders as uh, being somewhat, um, I don't know, insane. It's sort of like where they, they, it's an echo chamber. It's almost a religious doctrine being created where they talk to each other about what's good and what's not good. But it seems like... Um, very little real world sort of discussions are happening with customers. And I think, and again, you can agree or disagree with that. Ripple clearly talks to customers, banks, users every day. Um, what are your thoughts on like the state of crypto sort of as a religion in general? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, talking to people around Silicon Valley, it can make you feel very smart and, and powerful. And, you know, like we're, uh, we're just so much better than all these idiots. And that's where we, we do go wrong. I mean, it's, it, it's, oh, yeah. it's fun. This yeah. is a fun environment that we all live in here, around here, but it can't be an echo chamber. There's nothing more humiliating than in going out and talking to customers yeah. and hearing what they really think or how little they think or yeah. how much they don't care or what does this mean for, for you know, my daily life, the bottom line. Yeah. Um, and we need to do that all the time. So once you start you know, living in the world of your customers, Boy, that really changes, you know, what your priorities are, and getting that product market fit. Of course, you have to do that, and it's really hard, and it is humiliating, especially when you're a startup that is, you know, yeah. no one's heard of, and and you got to go in there, and you got to you got to take a hundred no's to get your one yes. But yeah, but but it it's so important. I think yeah. it's important for every startup, it's imp and in crypto, you're right. I think um, that has been kind of the way we rolled on a lot of things, uh, and we and we have to break out of that. You talked about in that in the first part of your answer. You talked about like how sometimes we feel like we're gods in, in technology and in crypto. And you said the little people, but the little people are the ones that actually are the people. And if we're not talking to them and we have we just assume what they want, you end up with with bullshit. I mean, you end up with nonsense, right? And so, yeah. it, it you know, I was thinking well, we have to solve problems. We have to sell cars? We have to, we have to solve problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the bottom line. You have to Which Ripple does. People use XRP today to move money cross-border every day and across the country and all that. And, and, and people know Bitcoin has a use case. Um, uh, and, but I was thinking about like ETH and like what ETH does. And I'm, we hold a lot of ETH and we love it. And we love Vitalik and we love the whole team. That's awesome. But, um, you know, it's like what is ETH's use case right now? And it, it, the only real answer is DeFi which is great, but as far as I can tell, DeFi is mostly used by crypto holders right now to lend their crypto to other crypto holders to borrow to get into leveraged transactions in crypto. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's fantastic, but it's not, it's still, it's completely not bringing new people into the ecosystem as far as I can tell. And I don't know, do you have thoughts on that or am I just, you know? Well, I mean, I had a general thought on kind of, yeah, how is crypto actually going to be used? And you're right yeah. on Bitcoin. I think it has really carved out this area of stored value and that, that works. It does, you know, as yeah. a store of value. Um, I think with uh, XRP around uh, things like web monetization, convincing content creators, there's a great com company called Coil, yeah. uh, which I think, you know, they're out with Coil, customers yeah. every day and the customers are responding. Things like what Forte is doing in the game. Can you explain space. Coil? Just I'm not sure. Does anybody know what Coil is in the audience? We're investors, and a few people do. Yeah, uh, Stefan Thomas, an incredible genius, uh, kind of one of the early Bitcoin uh, developers, and and uh, his vision was how do you get back to the original web, yeah. which is supposed to be more democratic, not controlled by you know the eight, eight people that control it in the world uh, today, but replacing kind of that workaround, which was ad networks, 
with the ability to pay in tiny amounts of, you know, mm -hmm. you're consuming content, packets of information, yeah. and you're paying for it in, in packets of value. And, and that's what they've actually built. And now they have uh, deals with uh, Imager, fantastic uh, yeah. uh, company, uh, Mozilla, and, and they're, they're making a difference. So, yeah. But that, that is, they had to do that by talking to those content creators yeah. uh, of how do you get out of the trap of these big platforms. Forte, another great uh, example of a, of a gaming platform company, had great, some great announcements just a couple days ago around uh, these gaming. Forte you acquired. Forte we in, in, yeah. invested in. in. Oh, you invested it's, in. Yeah, well, it's an independent yeah. company, right? Yeah. So, uh, and they're doing some great stuff around, you know, how do you take these assets that are in gaming environments yeah. and make it so they can be assets that can move around the world, right? Yeah. Just like things of value, which they are. People pump incredible amounts of money into these uh, gaming platforms. Wouldn't it be nice if you could, you know, have a secondary market for them or they could be invested in, uh, by uh, Wall Street companies eventually? Who knows? They just become assets in the yeah. world. And, and they do that using ILP, right, the interoperability. So you have that, uh, use XRP then as the bridge currency of that mm -hmm. gaming asset to any other type of, of thing of value. And again, it's what did those gaming developers need? Yeah. Because they have specific needs and, and this filled, that filled a gap. And it's the same thing with uh, cross-border payments using XRP for on-demand liquidity. Boy, having those early, you know, meeting after meeting with a MoneyGram over years and years to explain how this works, why it's a benefit. Again, long slog, but once you, yeah. once you get the light going off by talking to customers, it really improves things. If people, I, I didn't think about this before, but you have made, Ripple has made a number of investments in this space. If, you, if people in this audience, there's developers here, they want to build on, in the ecosystem, how do they go about contacting, who at Ripple is sort of in charge of looking at these new companies and deals? Is it Ethan Beard or is it a Ethan, Ethan Beard is a phenomenal guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, used to uh, kind of a key guy at the uh, Facebook uh, yeah. early platform, Android platform over with Google. And just a phenomenal guy, runs Spring. Uh, which is sort of an in-house venture group? Yeah, effectively, and also uh, you know, supporting folks in the ecosystem and trying to make tools that make it easier to use ILP and the XRP ledger. Yeah. They're doing some great work there. So encourage anybody to seek out you know, what Ethan is doing. And What's it's Ethan's uh, phone number? Do you know his phone number out there? <laughs> <laughs> I assume on the website there's some way to... I know I can get in touch with them if there's people... Isn't it on the back of your us. shirt? Isn't it's, it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's it. I, I, I appreciate your time. Um, I think what we agreed on uh, is that the SEC is evil, uh, uh, and I don't know. I think the other thing was that everybody is crazy in this industry, right? Except that's it. No. I think it's time to go. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.